Hi, I'm Will Buchanan. I'm walking all the way across the country to New Hampshire for more freedom on a project called the Walk for Liberty. Today is December 2nd, 2008, day 202. A couple days ago, when we were trying to get the RV back up and running, I noticed a bright pink sign on a nearby house. Notice, this dwelling unit is declared unfit for human habitation by the town of Throop, New York, Code Enforcement Department, due to housing code violations. What really popped out at me about that notice was that it didn't say it was declared unfit due to health code violations but rather due to housing code violations. With that stated reason, for all we know, they could have been kicked out of their own house for building on an addition and not getting permission or filing the required papers with the authorities. So if that was the case, how is it that that house is then unfit for human habitation? All it means is that the homeowners didn't pay the government the required bribe in order to continue living in it, and that the government is trying to pull the wool over the rest of our eyes by saying that it's somehow unfit to live in. But let's assume for a moment that it was actually forcibly closed off due to some reason that many might consider legitimate. Such as that there were too many rotting bags of garbage in the house, or that the wiring presented a fire hazard. Even in those cases, does it make sense for the government to force those homeowners not to live in their dwelling? Let's examine the possible scenarios in which this would actually play out. So they're ordered by the government to leave their house. Case one is that they decide to obey the order and leave. And case two is that they decide to ignore it and stay. In case one, where they decide to leave, they might have enough money to rent a hotel room indefinitely or they might have friends or relatives who they can stay with again indefinitely but considering the likely possibility that they didn't have enough money to pay for the government's code enforcement then they probably don't have the money to pay for a hotel room and if there's nobody who's willing to take them in on an indefinite basis then they're basically now homeless. How is it that that's better for them and their kids than continuing to live in their supposedly unsafe dwelling but yet still having a home? Case two is that they decide to stick it out in their house despite the government's warning. In this case, they're either forcibly dragged out of their house and locked out which essentially then makes it equivalent to case number one. Or they put up some level of resistance and are either thrown in jail or are perhaps even shot dead by the cops. And how is it that having jailed or dead parents is better for their children than continuing to live in a supposedly unsafe house and still having parents. Cases like these are almost always the result when people try to use government to supposedly do good. People see what they consider to be an unfit dwelling. Which, by the way, is completely subjective. What's one person's unfit dwelling is another person's castle. They then try to use government to rectify the situation so that no one has to live in an unfit dwelling. 
The problem is that they don't foresee the unintended consequences that result. People who are homeless, jailed, orphaned, or perhaps even dead. And note that the government almost certainly didn't do this on its own initiative. They were most likely snitched on by some do-gooder. The key is that it's nobody's business but your own what house you live in. It's your house, your property, and your choice. I walked just over 18 and a half miles for Liberty today. Here are my GPS coordinates. If you do any of your shopping online, please consider purchasing through amazon.walkforliberty.com and a percentage of your purchase price will go to help support the Walk for Liberty. Amazon, Amazon, amazon.walkforliberty.com This is Will Buchanan signing off.